Hello, I am so grateful and excited to be here today to introduce to you all a very special and dear friend and person that has been a very important part of Perfect Ocean for the last 14 years. I felt that this year for International Women's Day, I would like to introduce you to my business partner in Japan, who is a co-owner of Perfect Potion in Japan. This year's International Women's Day theme is Breaking the Bias. This has come directly from their website. The Breaking the Bias means imagining a gender equal world, a world free of bias stereotypes and discrimination, a world that is diverse, equitable and inclusive, a world where difference is valued and celebrated. Now, as I said, this interview is going to be a little biased because I've known Kyo Yamamoto for quite some time now and she is our business partner. But I would like Keo tonight to share her perfect potion journey and the challenges that she has experienced in Japan. I don't want to go too much into the situation in Japan, especially for women who are in business, women who are trying to succeed in politics or other areas within uh, within J Japan. Uh, it's a fascinating place. It's a beautiful place. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to Kyo. Hi, hi <laughs> Kyo. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much. I'm Kyo Yamamoto from Perfect Portion Japan. Thank you for inviting me tonight. Thank you, Kyo. Look, um, I have here uh, some questions that I... Um, uh, were written out for me. Um, and so I'd yep. like to go through these questions. We might end up, you know, digressing <laughs> a little bit and going off the topic. Um, but <laughs> I will start off by asking you the first question, Keo, and yes. that is about your journey with Perfect Potion. Could you tell us how you got to the situation we are today? Yes, yes, it's... So I had a spa, I owned a spa in Okinawa in Japan, maybe 2003 or four, around that time. And I was very confident in my technique of, of Ayurveda treatment and also my customer service care. I was so happy about that. But also I was looking for something interesting and the unique and the genuine product to support me. And at that time, I was thinking uh, that these products must not be so popular yet in Japan. And I imported the aromatherapy product from America, Europe, and also Australia. I had a lot of product and a lot of box in that month. And when I opened the bottle of Perfect Potion essential oil, I just fell in love. I can't explain anything. I just fell in love. And I start to contact to you in Australia, and I start to talk to you a lot about what I would like to do. I was too passionate and maybe scare you about <laughs> what I do that time. Yep, I remember. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't I? Um, you taught you. We um, we've had this discussion many times, and you said I was difficult to get hold of to contact. Yeah, because I sent an email to you many times, but uh, I don't know, my English was too bad and uh, I just scared you. <laughs> I couldn't have any response. So I decided to go to Australia, Brisbane, to see you. And uh, I visit a lot of perfect potion shop in the town. And I asked, I would like to see Sal, Salvatore Battaglia. <laughs> I would like to see Salvatore Battaglia. Where is he? So and I remember, yes, the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> persistence paid off, didn't it, um, in terms yeah. of, and when we finally met, I think I really understood that passion that you had for the brand, <laughs> but more importantly, 
um, I think you understood our vision and our purpose. Um, and that is why we are here today. Um, yeah, you thank are you. our yeah. perfect <laughs> ocean managing director in Japan. Um, I, if I can add, if I can add to the story, at that time yeah. I was also in discussion with many other. Uh, distribution companies that wanted to distribute our product in Japan. So you can imagine when I was contacted by a some, like Hio, who had this one spa in Okinawa, um, well, what experience does she have in distributing products into department stores and so on? Um, but at that stage, I had become very clear of our vision in creating concept stores in Japan. And upon that first meeting, I understood immediately that Kyo would be the right person to help Perfect Potion establish in Japan. I suppose by doing this, and this, this next question, I, because I don't necessarily like the term business woman or businessman, but the question was, was it always your dream to become a business businesswoman? But so I would like to rephrase that. Was it your, you know, what was your dream? Mm. And how did you make it happen? Okay. And uh, like uh, my dream was not become the businesswoman. I have never seen that like, like this. Mm. My dream is I was always thinking to live with joyful happiness and exciting. And I would like to do what I love to do. And I would like to do what I can make my friends, family, and other people happy. So just, I always wanted to enjoy my life. So now I'm doing this. And I was looking for, uh, at, at the same time, I was thinking about how can I make the income by like uh, enjoy by being enjoying or me uh, how can I say do yeah. happy things yeah, yeah. and yeah. but I don't you think if we can make the income yeah. to make somebody feel so happy it must yes. be so special business yeah. and do you know what I found this business yeah thank you so much yes. Kyo. Yeah, and that's it and that's exactly yeah. what i did see in Keo in terms of she understood our values in terms of what we are trying to achieve um with our products in terms of the way that they help people and the way that they make people feel and so that is why 14 years on we still have a wonderful flourishing perfect potion business in Japan. Um, this next question um, is interesting one because it's looking at, well, and I would like to, I won't say, I won't say anything here because I just want yep. you to recall what are the achievements that you have been most proud of in your journey so far with perfect potion? Yeah, so it's, very difficult question because there are so many achievements every day in my life, not mm. one big one or not something very particular one. I can just say I love what I'm doing at this moment. I'm so happy every day with my family, friend, and the perfect portion team. This is what most proud of in my career. Mm. Mm. So can I just think, and if I can interject here and say something, I said, when we started Perfect Potion, we had one little shop yeah. in a back ah, street yes. in Kyoto yeah. with two casual team. Can yes. you remind everybody or can you tell everybody how many yeah. amazing team we have now in J Perfect Potion Japan? Yeah, about 60 people. 60 we people. Have. That's incredible. Thank you so <laughs> yeah, much. I that's a, that's yeah. incredible. And it has yeah, been so you. difficult in yeah, you know, like everywhere in the world, whether it what during the pandemic or pre-pandemic, you know, we've had to overcome so many challenges. Now, this is, as you know, this perfect potion. So we're talking about perfect potion. Can I mention one little achievement that I was very proud 
very very yeah. proud of you and that is okay. the patchouli story ah. you we had just started perfect potion in japan and when we had received yes. notification from the japanese um uh, health authorities the government the, the the ministry of health saying that patchouli was now going to become a ban ingredient from use in cosmetic products cosmetic. correct yes, yes yes correct yes correct and yeah, yeah yeah i love patchouli and patchouli is in everything I know, now, I know. we so many of our products had patchouli and the last thing i wanted to do was uh, the last thing I wanted to do was remove patchouli from all the skincare products that we had and all the different topical products that we had. So you remember what I said? I I want I want this story to come from you. Remember I said <laughs> what I said? Well, let's find out why have they decided to ban patchouli? And you said, yeah, well, yeah of course, let's do that. I yeah. had at that time we had just opened up our shop and we had somebody yes. from the Australian government come in from and they said, Oh, that's incredible. An Australian company in Japan, they were from Australia, and they said, if you ever need any help, please call us. And so I thought, well, we need help with this one. I called mm -hmm. them and they said, Well, you must follow the Japanese laws. What do you want us to do? I said, but no other country in the world is banning patchouli. Mm. So I said to Keo, let's make some phone calls. And Keo was more than happy to make some phone calls and tell us yes. the outcome. Keo, yeah, what happened? <laughs> Just a uh, bit wrong story. What do you like me to talk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just, yeah, I called to the government office and I found uh, they didn't have right, how can I say, they they it's no at that time you research a lot this product the very major popular product is using patchouli and mm. this food this drink very yeah. major drink using patchouli you research a lot and yeah. you sent me a lot of documents yeah. in english about 30 pages or more <laughs> and I, I translated everything into japanese and i bring that to the government office to explain these company use, but why we can't use and what at that time. So your research helped me to talk to the government people. Yeah. And uh, when I talked a lot, I talk, uh, I showed a lot of research, then they couldn't say anything. And uh, then they decided that uh, we can use patchouli in a product. Yeah. If not in Kyoto, in Japan, everywhere. Yes. Yeah. So mm, now what we did, what you did, because everybody else that I've spoken to said, but these are the, this is the way you do things. You shouldn't speak, you know, you shouldn't challenge the government about this. And it's not that we challenged, we were simply looking for an explanation, which they weren't mm. able to provide. And mm. I think, and more importantly, I think they were taken off guard because it was Kia that was calling them and we our business was quite new so nobody really knew who we were mm -hmm. and they were quite surprised but they did yeah. respond positively and as a result of that little of that situation we can still use patchouli in skincare yes. products today and at that so, time somebody called me dangerous woman because yes. i I remember. I argued that. to the government. <laughs> that is <laughs> wonderful. To argue now, to the government is yeah, scary. We have had a lot of challenges. You've had yes. you've had a lot of challenges in this in your journey. What would yep. be one of the biggest challenges that you have experienced in your journey? Mm. But I I think like a uh, in past portion Japan business not with uh, outside inside perfect portion japan business i don't have it, uh, i don't have any challenges because i'm the woman business owner because mm -hmm. everybody understand about the perfect portion and everybody respect and uh, i like all the team respect what we are doing so they don't think i'm woman or i'm men yeah mm. yeah 
So in perfect yep. po- inside the perfect position business company, I have never had this challenge yeah. as a leadership. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But you do, I mean, I, I, I thought here, the situation in Japan in terms of women, mm. in, women in business, women in leadership roles, Japan mm. has mm. one of the lowest in all of the mm-hmm. OECD countries where women mm-hmm. are on the boards mm-hmm. of big companies, mm-hmm. where women are in government and, and in professional places. Japan yeah. has one of the worst statistics. Yes. And yes. as a small business in Japan, we did face some challenges. Um, yes, of course. Would you yes. like to tell <laughs> us about the challenge that we had, for example, yes, when yes, we yes, tried yes. to borrow money in Japan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry to say this, but uh, yes, I have a lot, lot of difficult situation to do business as woman owner in Japan, and uh, especially with the government offices and also banks, because the first first decade we couldn't borrow any money from the major bank. Because what they said is there are only women and also foreigner business owner in perfect portion, then they can't trust us. And that uh, we were new, still one or two yeah. years. And uh, they we didn't have any like trust to show them. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was also the Japanese tax office office once in an audit suggested that maybe we could overcome this problem um, yep. if we had a extra director in our Japanese company, which was a man, because man. it and was we have not to usual them. to have just yep. a female as a director of a company in Japan. Yeah. Yes, he recommended. Mm. He recommended it. Mm. So do you think, by the way, I'm, I'm changing the questions, do you think yep. the situation, yes. because that happened a few years ago, do you yep. think the situation has changed today? Yes, around the public portion, Japan business, it's changed a lot. But mm. I don't know, it's not so changed in Japan, but around mm. us it's changed because yeah. we have had a very good relationship and we have established a very good relationship with the local bank or other company to support mm. each other. So not everybody are uh, bad in Japan. No, They're no, of course not. And we're not they, I, yeah. and, and of course I'm not saying that because that's the way we've been treated that people are bad, but I, I do know mm. it was uh our business acquaintance, he is our, by the way, he's our shop fitter and he runs a mm. successful building yes. practice, but he yes. introduced Keo time. to a local bank um, yep. and the local bank were wonderful and very supportive of our business yes. and understand and just love the values that we're doing. We've actually done yeah. some work with them that, and so on. Yes. So it's been a really wonderful experience that. Um, yes. So, yeah, look, we have... I'll, we will always face some obstacles, whether it's in mm. business, but some of these obstacles in Japan have been purely mm. because of Kyo being a woman. I was told when we first started Perfect Potion in Japan by another acquaintance, a male acquaintance, who, when I introduced Kyo to him, his exact words were, what, you are crazy setting up a company in Japan with a female managing director. His exact words were, she'll send you broke. Well, that was mm-hmm. 14 years ago, and Perfect yep. Potion <laughs> um, has only flourished in that 14 years. So I'm glad that we were yeah. able to prove our mutual friend Yes. Wrong yes, me too. In that one. Thank you so much. Yeah, with your now, support. Thank you. This is another very in, interest, uh, in, important question, which I'm sure a lot of people would like to hear your answer. So one of yep. the biases that women face, mm. not just in oh. Japan, but around the world, is being told to focus on motherhood over career. How have you managed that, especially being the managing director of Perfect Potion, 60 staff, and how many shops do we have? So how do you balance? Because, by um, by the way, you have two beautiful girls who I haven't had the opportunity to see now for over two years. So, And I hope that <laughs> Mino and Hio are well. So how do you do, um, balance 
mother being a mum and running a business? Yes, like uh, talking about the bias, of course, the, I was told many times, uh, focus on the motherhood and not do the business. The woman shouldn't be at, uh, shouldn't, should be at home and shouldn't be in the business. But uh, uh, it's true because I'm a woman and uh, I have motherhood. So I'm using my motherhood in my business. And I always thinking I'm the big mom of perfect portion Japan. And I treat and I do what I do at home and in the business. Maybe base is the same. But some of the team said I'm like more like dad than mom because <laughs> as you know I'm single and at home I sometimes become mom I have to sometimes become dad so I'm mom and dad so what <laughs> I am is in the business I'm using this my character mm -hmm. in the business mm -hmm. yeah and uh um, yeah 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 <laughs> I I have I imagine that Mino and Hill see you mm. as a role model. Mm. What do you hope that they will learn from your experience? Yes, and I, I don't think I'm perfect and I'm good. So I don't hope they should learn this one or something like this. But I always would like to show them how I enjoy my life with family, with friends, with the, in, in the business. Then, because they, I would like them to feel the life is very peaceful, joyful, happiness, and exciting. So if they can feel, I think they feel something from me because my little one, little girls always would like to be the perfect portion managing director. The first time she said this was when she was four, four or five years old. Since that time, she always said she would like to be the managing director of Perfect Portion Japan. But recently, <laughs> do you know what she said? Because if I will be in the Perfect Portion Japan managing director, mom will be so sad because mom enjoy this job at this moment <laughs> and I decided to go to other country to establish public portion wow <laughs> yeah that's amazing that because public portion Japan is yours so I would like to be other countries perfect portion managing director I think she could come to Australia and become <laughs> and take over my role. <laughs> and no. I think that he yeah. would be able to do that confidently. Yeah. yeah, no. yeah. So um, I think in saying yeah, that, yeah. they must yeah. also be very proud of their mum. Thank you so much yeah, for sharing thank you. that thank story. You so much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, just one last yeah. question, and this is very yes. important. And this is like, yep. what is your advice that you would give other women, not just in Japan? but around oh. the world to help break yeah. the bias and help you know how do you break that glass ceiling so that you can mm. actually um be successful in what you do and follow your dreams mm -hmm. and uh it's also the difficult difficult question again but uh it may be politically incorrect but if somebody really would like to I'm not sure my word is right. Sorry if it's yeah, not okay. please correct it. Yeah, but if somebody really hope and actually work very hard, what you direct like, what she would like to do, mm. but like uh, she can't achieve anything, and when she start feel uh, very tired or lose her passion or lose her happiness or joyful and the love. I think that she may be in wrong place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure it's right yeah, to say. Yeah, no, I, but, uh, I know yeah, exactly. Yeah, because what it's very important, to, yeah, yeah. very important to yeah, very important to to choose your place, our place. Yeah, because we should choose the place and the things what you we are feeling so happy. Mm -hmm. We can decide. We can choose. So important things is 
choose your right place. Yeah. I'm always said to this to our team because yeah. they choose perfect portion. And I hope mm. this place is good for them. And I try to make this place mm. very happiness for them. Yeah. But not I choose them, they choose us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So、And、people can choose. Okay.、Mm. I'm, I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to、okay. add to that because I think you've explained that beautifully. And sometimes、okay. uh, yeah. mm. I think you've explained that excellently. And it's about choosing that, choosing the right space and place that makes us feel happy. And I think having, knowing that you've chosen that place、um, will help you to overcome many of the adversities that we may. May be dealing with. I know, I know, just in finishing off, I know this has been particularly a, a big challenge in Japan, for example, like、um, the, the number of women in politics, for example, or the number of women in big executive roles in Japan is quite low compared to other countries. But women do face an, a lot of challenges in those roles, don't they? Mm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, yes and, but if you, if you choose the place that you want to be, I think you can sometimes, you will find ways to overcome those challenges. Look, thank you so much for sharing、yeah. your wisdom. I am, yeah, certainly, thank you. I am certainly so grateful and so honored that Keo, we have had、um, this business relationship, which is also, you know, We're, we're friends as well,、um, in order that you know, now Perfect Potion started in Japan in 2008. So it's、yes. certainly, we've had some tough times, but it will also it will continue to flourish. And I know it will continue to flourish under the incredible leadership of、yes. Keo. And I have some bad news to tell Keo that my. Our flights to Japan. I had、oh, some、yes. flights to Japan in April. I know. Were cancelled、mm -hmm. simply because、um, it's still, Japan is still not open to foreign,、yep. um, you know, foreign tourists or for, foreigners.、Yes. I think I could still go over on business per. Purposes, but I would still、mm. have to do quarantine. But I、yep. have rescheduled for June. And look, and when, when the borders all do finally open up and there are no more travel restrictions, we do、yep. hope to one day do, and we've been talking this、uh, for a long time.、Ah, and I know I have、yeah. so many perfect potion、um, customers here in Australia that would love. One of our、yeah. to do for us to do a tour in Japan of our favorite places、yes. in Kyoto. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. one wow, day, do I don't think it will be in 2022, <laughs> but it will be hopefully、yes. next year. We do look、yes. forward to doing that. But,、yes. Keo, thank、yes. you so much for your、yeah. um, sharing with you、thank、your you. story and your、um, passion as well. Thank you so、yeah. much. Thank you so much. I'm more than happy. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.